Welcome to Call to Arms Gates of Hell. In this series, we will take a look at different campaigns and miniseries with various settings and times as we partake in different battles with characters and stories helped created by you. I would like for you to let me know what kind of characters you come up with including their names and even surnames if so desired. If you are not that creative, you can just give me a name and I will make a background story and lore for that character and bring them to life on the battlefield. But you can also, of course, make your own background story for your character, and I will implement that in the series as well. Just be aware that this game can be very brutal, and your character might end up with a very unceremonious and sudden death. But that is, of course, what makes it exciting and thrilling. So I hope to see a varied cast of characters created by you. For this particular miniseries, it will be a World War II campaign shown from the Soviet perspective, so please create your characters with that in mind. Later on, we will do other settings and modern times as well, so that you will have a bit of an easier time to create characters for me to play with. Once again, if you are not that good at creating stories or background lore, giving me just the name of a character is fine, and I will make a story in history for it. Since the Soviets had succeeded in capturing the small town at the crossroads, they could punch further into the central front and start a large assault on the outskirts of a city faster than expected. This time, the Reds would send in their tanks, leading the way and boosting morale to all soldiers surrounding them. These men were fresh, eager awaiting battle, with many already having experienced it. Their main concern was to take out the AT weapons and mortars so that the tanks could roll in further and deal with anything threatening the approach of the main army. One of the men who served during this fight was Jan Nikati, originally a Catholic Polish soldier who ran from his village when it was burned down by the Germans and then served the Soviets ever since. He still held a lot of rage for what the Germans did to him in his village. That rage often expressed in him running up towards the front, but that has proven a quick and untimely death for so many already. Alright, hey everybody, and a welcome to another episode of Call to Arms Gates of Hell. I want to thank you once again for sending me a lot of different names and different characters that we will, of course, represent in this series. Almost lost my life to that friendly tank there. Also, big shout out to the viewer who uh, taught me how to actually turn off the silhouettes so we won't have those annoying things to deal with. We're here now actually attacking a village that's larger in the previous one. Now we also have tanks amongst our ranks. Um, some of the characters that you have sent in were also sent in as tank commanders. So that's definitely also something I would encourage you. Again, let your creativity speak. Share your creative characters in the comments down below. And we will feature them in this series. And don't give up hope if you don't see your characters in this particular episode. You can only do a handful per episode. But... Oh! Nikiti's death was quick and sudden. Just as many others who had their hearts flooded with blind rage. Back at the rear, at the utmost left flank, was a soldier who took part who carried the name Sasha Kasnov. Sasha had a very poor upbringing and wasn't the brightest man alive. But he had a very natural talent for shooting and scored amongst the highest during shooting training. He already had killed in multiple battles beforehand and would do again without question. It was difficult to tell by just looking at his face if all that killing took a toll on his soul. Well, that was a very abrupt ending for that one soldier. We hear more on the left flank a little bit further back to the rear. Now, we are facing tougher German resistance, even though we do have tanks on our side. They do actually have anti-tank weapons of themselves. You can actually see them ricocheting off our tank. Might not be the smartest thing to uh, stand so close to one of our tanks that's under attack like that. However, they do provide some valuable cover. Look at that. It's a good flanking position. 
Love the sounds of the reloading of the tanks. Oh, we got running Germans. Boom. This guy got his first kill in. Let's take it nice and slow. The other one died so fast. It was, of course, also he had a submachine gun. Kind of ideal for fighting at this range. Oh. Now, the interesting thing here is that the Germans actually have more units in this fight than we do. But, they don't have as many tanks or AT weapons. So you can actually see that a lot of them are actually retreating. Boom! Got another kill. This guy's uh, going places. This guy might receive a medal if he survives. Beautiful. Wow. We got four kills. Okay, here on the left flank, we are moving forward. Our tanks are still operational. Believe me, I had playtests where it went real bad for the uh, for the Russians. Now we got mortars again, giving me flashbacks to uh, the first mission we did. Seeing how damn accurate those can be, it has me worrying a bit. That's what I'm talking about. Looks like to the right of this house there are also some enemies. Oh there, oh, there it is! Oh! Great. Oh my god, get in the house. Can I heal? Yes, I can. Come on. This guy's not gonna die. He's an absolute beast. Oh, we got some German armor there. Alright. Oh dear, we just lost one of our tanks. We have a little bit of a stalemate here. We might have to send in another wave of soldiers. I'm gonna make it across. I didn't want to go further there because I would be in machine gun range of that tank. Seeing if maybe going to the right here. See, there's been some heavy fighting on this side as well. Crap! Sasha died there on that battlefield. As later his body would be found by his fellow friends and comrades. They mourned him later talk stories about how Sasha's aim was ever so true and took out many an enemy during multiple battles. With the German armor posing more of a threat, a second wave of tanks was sent in to deal with them. One tank was being driven by Ivan Maxim. He had always been a grease monkey and him and his crew had been in multiple battles already and had always come out mostly unscathed. The tank had suffered some damage here and there but it was always patched up afterward. The gunner in the tank was Alexander Valdez, a young farm boy who by pure chance 
rolled his way into the gunner seat of a tank like this. They made a formidable team with their commander, and the tank had received the nickname Polodnitsa, the Moon Ray. All right, here we go. Sending in some more tanks, some more troops. See some Germans over there. Using the machine gun to take them out. Now, of course, multiple units are in these tanks, so you can even also send in character names that are, for example, machine gunners, or, you know, the reloader or the turret gunner. You know, the commander of the tank won't actually be the one killing the units, per se. He'll be calling out the kills. This house is giving me a lot of... Okay, there's a tank there. Um, hold on. Let me see if I can get around it. Yeah, that mortar is now harassing me. go. It's one. If we can just cripple it. I think I did. I think it's strike us loose. Oh, here we go. Crew is unloading. It's not dangerous anymore. Okay, machine gun is taking care of the rest. There we go. Good thing, of course, about the mortars. Oh, we had an officer. That is the really cool thing about this game, is that- Oh! Okay. I was a little worried there for a moment. I was about to say, the cool thing about this is that, um... You can actually see that part of my body is actually damaged from that. But yeah, the, if you're in a tank in this game, you are an absolute force to be reckoned with. Oh! Oh! Ooh. I don't want to be those guys. Oh! A beautiful Big Bang. But yeah, no, you're an absolute force to be reckoned with, where in many other games, the enemies have plenty of opportunity to deal with you. Here they don't. I do believe that in a recent update, they added the Panzerfausts, or maybe Shreks, I don't remember. But um, I think some new AT weapons were added, but this mission was created before that. That just actually some of the other missions I created to support that as well. Hello, Leute. Wie geht's? Man, we are cleaning up. Come 
out of ammo. No. Don't know how he didn't die from that. Oh no! Look at him run. Not the smartest of AI. I mean, he's taking cover, but, you know. I think that's it. I'm actually looking at the minimap. Man, I, I won't lie. This tank, this crew, deserves some medals right here. I've done, again, playtesting where it went so much worse for the Russians, where... Again, if you look at the damage, um, my right side and central side have actually been damaged. It would not have taken a whole lot more to, for example, take off my right track and have this tank basically be crippled. But yeah, no, we took the town, look at that, with more ease than expected, to be honest. And uh, yeah, these uh, this crew will definitely get... Uh, Get some medals. And uh, we will see them back in future missions when the tanks are involved. The tank, the Moon Wraith, did God's work that day. Almost single handedly, this tank crew won the entire battle. Where other Soviet tanks got either crippled or shot to pieces, this tank did not only manage to deal with the German tanks themselves but also the mortars and AT weapons. All of the crew had survived the attack, with just the tank getting a bit beat up. It would have to sit the next battle out, since it needs repairs. It would soon be on the battlefield once more to deal out death and destruction. All throughout the afternoon, the Soviets chanted the name of the Moon Wraith as they cheered.